Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Hey, I've got a visitor today. This is Brian from Liebold, and he brought a toy with him that we're playing with. This is a helium leak detector, and we're uh, playing with it with the harvest right and some piping and stuff. And so uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, so you're adjusting the flow rate on the That's helium. That's correct. Yeah, we don't want too much. We don't want to flood the system. Yeah. If you have too much helium in the air, then it can pick up from many different leaks. So you want to be more specific. So having a very fine leak will pinpoint the leak rather than spraying it and dosing it with too much helium where it comes in everywhere and you have no idea where your leak's at. So that's why we always like to just see about a bubble a second, which we're about a little more than that, but uh, that's certainly not, um, not too much. So... We've been using the Harvest Right as a guinea pig, and we've been checking all the different locations for possible leaks. Whether or not these leaks matter for this machine to be able to function is kind of irrelevant. What I was more interested in was how this process works and how they can use helium to find a leak. So we identified a couple here on the door seal, and this one happens to be the worst. It's not enough to affect the performance of the machine, but let's just show you what's involved in uh, finding that leak. So Brian, you're injecting a little bit of yeah. helium right there. Yeah, it doesn't take much. And that's how much helium he's flowing. And the machine over here has already picked that up. And so, Brian, why helium? Well, helium is uh, a very light gas. It's able to penetrate very small orifices. There's many different types of leaks. This is basically a mass spectrometer, and we can tune it specifically for helium as it being a very light gas. So it's very common in the vacuum industries, science, um, aerospace, all kinds of different applications require leak tightness of their vacuum chambers and their vacuum apparatus. Welds, for instance. Um, so basically, there's many different ways to helium check. The way you um, do this one is we're basically using the roughing pump, which is a very small two-stage rotary vane uh, vacuum pump. We have other models as well, but on this particular unit, uh, it's roughly 2 to 3 to CFM, I believe, somewhere in there. And we're pulling a vacuum directly on the chamber. And so you can see this hose coming through. It's going into the leak detector. Any helium that is pulled through any leaks, and this one in particular that we've identified, will go through the chamber, through the hose, and it will hit the analyzer cell. And that's where you get your alarm. So you can see we're going to take it. We're just going to put it where we know the leak is. And we should see the leak climb. And you can see it right there. So it's very, very critical with vacuum systems to ensure vacuum integrity that you use a helium leak detector. I know a lot of people have different methods, soap, and they use you know acetone or different things like this, but really helium is the safest gas to use. It's an inert gas, um, and it works very well with these leak detectors. So these are very useful tools. We sell a lot of these every year. They're roughly around $20,000, so certainly a lot more than a freeze dryer. But if you have very expensive vacuum chambers or apparatus, it's very critical that you use a helium leak detector. And that way, you're not wondering why we're not hitting our ultimate pressure, what's happening. So a very, very useful tool in the vacuum world. We're going to take a look at this area right here where we got the biggest signal. And you can see right here, there's a little... A little nick. Kind of hard to see. It is, but maybe we'll get a different camera in there. But that happens to line up with that mark from when we were doing our testing. So it definitely found something. Yeah, it did. And Brian, you think uh, that there's a product that I can buy that uh, may help with that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a product on the market made by Dow Corning, and it's called uh, High Vacuum Grease, and it's used commonly um, to seal O-rings and things like this. It's very important that you, you don't use any other type of grease because of the outgassing properties and then also the harmful effects that it could have on the rubber or any type of elastomer. So anytime you're going to use 
use vacuum grease. It needs to be vacuum grease. Don't try to use anything else like I just mentioned. Um, it's not too expensive. I think three to 3.5 ounces set you back about 20 to 25 dollars. But what you would do is you just put it inside of the seal in that little pocket there all the way around. And that way any type of little blemish or burr or what have you should seal up with that. And as Brian just showed, that's a very small um, imperfection. It may not have the biggest effect on the vacuum, but it's a leak nonetheless. And in this type of system, you want to try to remove any leaks that you can. So that's the kind of grease you would use. It's made by Dow Corning and it's called high vacuum grease. A couple of things I wanted to add to this video is that we actually did leak detect with helium this new style Harvest Right machine and it came back with a clean bill of health. It had no leaks. Um, the other thing on this machine was I went ahead and I took off the door seal and I marked where the possible leaks were and I inspected all of this um, and I didn't see anything obvious about that but uh, here are a couple of things. This was a super minor leak here and it turned out there were some little tiny scratches here and this was a super minor leak up here too. Um, I found that there was a little high spot and a little low spot so I just did a little bit of sanding with some 600 grit. Now this is actually a hone that has diamond on it and it did a really good job. So basically I just sanded in the direction of the drum and then down here this was the major issue, the little nick, and I went ahead and filled that with some epoxy that has little metal particles in it. It's called JB Weld, works really well and then let that sit up for a day and then again I sanded it with this uh, 600 grit hone. Now the end result was I was able to get this chamber down an additional 140 millitors of vacuum which is really great. And once again the the air leak in this front door was not enough to impact the machine itself or the functioning of the machine. It's just I noticed it when I was doing some testing and thought, you know, let's look into that. Kind of curious what's going on. All right, we're going to test out this uh, known bad hose. Now this is one that I had a leak in and I put some of this uh, silicone tape on here uh, to get me by. Anyway, so we're going to check this with the silicone tape and then we're going to take the tape off and test it again. What we're going to do right now is go ahead and test this hose with helium to see if we have any leaks coming through from this tape or any of these fittings right here. And as you can see, there's nothing happening. Huh? So we're going to go back down here, check this too. Nothing. So I would have to say this is leak tight. This definitely has not been compromised and apparently this tape works pretty well. So we've gone ahead and removed the tape right now. We're going to go ahead and spray a little bit of helium around this. And uh. You can see we're finding leaks around that right there. But it does seem like you have to bend that yeah, a little do. bit for the leak. There you go. Yeah. But the way these are in. The way these are installed, they usually have bends in them, so yeah. you can see that helium, since it's a very light gas, is able to penetrate any areas in here that might leak. As soon as we flex it a bit, let's see here. Look at that. Yeah. All right, check the other one. I will. not as bad as the other one. Yeah. Let's right. make sure we have a little bit of flow here real quick. We do. There's plenty of helium coming out. So let's do it again here. Well, this one's not as bad. All right. So Brian, the consensus, does that tape work? I would have to say yes. The tape works absolutely very well. No <laughs> problem at all. Buy the tape. 
All right, want to thank uh, Brian from Lay Bold for uh, coming by and bringing toys like usual. Brian? For the Epicenter.com, I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out.